The Puma Open Source Microscopy Project aims to teach scientific microscopy, an important part of which is image processing, both optical and digital. Just as my microscopy hardware tutorials are done in a practical way that you at home can follow along to using low-cost 3D printing, so likewise I'll be covering image processing using a similar practical approach that you can also follow along to using computer programming. This video begins that journey by introducing you to the C programming language, a simple yet powerful language that you can freely use at home on your PC to implement image processing algorithms and simulations. These tutorials are aimed at people like medical doctors and biologists who might not have a strong mathematical, engineering or computer science background, but who do have advanced skills to learn new subjects on their own. So, this series will not attempt to present the details of C coding in some encyclopedic bootcamp style. There are already many videos like that. Instead, I'll concentrate on introducing important principles to provide a starting point for further learning. To get the most out of these videos, I suggest you watch them twice, first at normal speed, then again pausing each slide to read the detailed text. This first video gives some basic information about how computers work and what computer programming means in general. It also allows me to explain some technical jargon that is commonly used in computer programming. In the past, programmable computers were built for single tasks, like computer-generated imagery, or CGI, on textiles. Much later, in the 20th century, more general-purpose computers were developed at around the 1930s and 40s. These were powered by electricity and had the ability to do a variety of different calculations on the data put into them by being fed precise instructions. Any particular set of those instructions that gets the machine to do a particular job is called a computer program. There are specific rules that must be obeyed which dictate the specifics of how such instructions must be expressed in order for them to be put into effect by the computer, and those rules are called the programming language. Early electronic digital computers were programmed laboriously, for example by rearranging physical switches and plug-in cables on a switchboard. The resulting arrangement of connections determined what computations the computer would do in response to input data. This arrangement of connections was the program, and the rules for how to arrange those connections to achieve the desired computations, i.e. the programming language, was unique to each physical type of computer. As computers became more advanced, the program could be stored in internal electronic switching and charge storage circuits, called the memory of the computer. This did away with the need to manually position mechanical switches and cables. Also, these internal memory circuits could store many more arrangements of connections than the old switchboard-type external memory system. These are the so-called stored program computers, modern versions of which we all use today. The arrangement of these binary switch states in the memory served the same function as the specific arrangement of cables and switches on the external program switchboards of the older computers. They determine how the computer responds to input data. The first programming languages used very low-level instructions. Essentially, they were just a sequence of numbers that, when represented in binary form and input into the computer memory, formed the various stored binary switch patterns that dictated the computer's responses to input data. This required the programmer to have a detailed knowledge of the physical makeup of the computer processor and the physical structure of its memory storage and retrieval systems in order for them to determine the correct numbers in the correct sequence to use in order to get the computer to perform the desired procedures on the input data. This type of programming language written as a series of pure numbers that have no intuitive meaning on their own to a human observer, but that the machine could implement directly, is called machine code. Because of this one-to-one -one relationship of machine code numbers with the physical workings of a specific type or model of computer, a program written in machine code for one machine will be different in detail for the same program, i.e. a program that has the same effect on input data, written in machine code for a different model of computer. Programming this way in the machine code language had the advantage of being very fast for the machine to execute, because there are no intermediate steps involved for the computer to run your instructions. 
It also takes up the bare minimum of internal memory space to store such a direct program, a factor that was vitally important for early computers that had very little and very expensive internal memory. However, writing programs directly in machine code has several disadvantages. 1. It is relatively hard for people to learn, use and interpret programs because it bears little resemblance to the natural languages we speak. This means that only people with super detailed knowledge of the specific computer hardware can program the computer and writing complex programs can take a long time and a lot of expensive manpower. 2. It is relatively easy for a programmer to make errors while programming in such an unintuitive and difficult language. Such errors in programs are called bugs and they cause the program to fail to work as expected. The process of finding and fixing those bugs is called debugging and this can be a very difficult task for a language written directly in machine code. Finally, as mentioned before, the details of machine code are specific to a particular type of computer. If you spend a lot of effort and money getting a useful program written in machine code for one type of machine, this program will need to be effectively rewritten if you want to run that program on another type of machine. This means machine code programs are not portable. This lack of portability is a particular issue if you want to write an operating system, that is, the complex software that allows general users to interact with a computer in an intuitive way without having the super specialist knowledge required by machine code programmers. Having said all that, it's important to understand that all computers, even modern computers today, still only ever run programs that are written in machine code. However, thanks to the tools described in the next section, programmers don't need to write that machine code directly. To help make computer programming and debugging easier, intermediary translation programs were developed. The first generation of these were quite simple programs called assemblers. They had to be small and simple because assemblers were also programs written in machine code and running on the limited memory of the computer. An assembler is a program that takes as input a sequence of short symbols written by the programmer, and it translates that sequence of symbols into a pure machine code program. The symbols that are input into the assembler are made up of collections of alphanumeric characters that bear some resemblance to natural language words that people can understand, as opposed to the pure numbers that make up machine code. The short symbols and the rules for using them comprise another type of programming language called assembly language. While use of assembly language makes reading, writing and debugging programs a little easier compared to writing the program directly as machine code, it is still very close to the way machine code works, so there is still an issue of portability and of programs taking a lot of work and specialist knowledge to write. Taken together, machine code and assembly language are known as low-level languages because they are very close to how the machine hardware actually processes data. Given that we can make machine code easier to read, write and understand for human programmers by using a simple layer of abstraction with an intermediary translation program, the assembler, it was a logical development to try and overcome the problems discussed previously by using an even higher level of abstraction, by developing more complex intermediary programs that would take in more natural language instructions and convert those instructions into machine code. Such complex intermediary programs became more practically realizable as the power and memory capacity of computers grew so that the computers could actually store and run such complex translation programs. The input to these complex translator programs would be files containing programs written using programming languages that more closely resemble natural English language and logic, called high-level programming languages. And the output would be pure machine code ready to run on the computer. Early examples of high-level programming languages include Algol, Lisp, Fortran, BASIC and C. In addition to making it possible to write programs in high-level languages, these complex intermediary translator programs can themselves be written in machine code of several different types of computer. This makes high-level programming languages portable, in the sense that you don't need to radically change a program written in a high-level language in order for it to run on different computer types, as long as each of those computer types has its own version of the appropriate translator program running on it. 
The complex intermediary translator programs that translate high-level programming languages into machine code come in two functional types, compilers and interpreters. Both take in, as their source material, a program written in a high-level language. The high-level program is therefore referred to as the source code for the compiler or interpreter program. In computing terminology, a compiler takes in the entire source code program and converts the whole program into a machine code file that can directly run on or be executed by the machine. It is as if the programmer had written their entire program purely in machine code from scratch, so you get the fast speed of execution associated with machine code programs. An interpreter, on the other hand, reads the source code one piece at a time and translates that small piece of source code program into machine code, runs it, then comes back to the source code to get the next piece, and so on, till the program ends. This interpreter method is therefore generally a slower method of running a program compared to using a compiled machine code executable file. Historically, high-level languages designed to be interpreted are different to high-level languages designed to be compiled, although especially more recently both compilers and interpreters have been written for many high-level languages, including the C programming language. High-level languages vary in many ways. Often, a high-level language would have been designed to achieve some specialist goal while still being relatively general. For example, FORTRAN, developed in the 1950s, stands for Formula Translation and was designed to make it easy to implement mathematical formulae on computers. It is generally a compiled language to make best use of computer speed for doing maths on large amounts of input data. On the other hand, BASIC, developed in the 1960s, stands for Beginner's All-Purpose Symbolic Instruction Code and was designed to be an easy introduction to programming for beginners. Ease of use was more important than speed of execution, so BASIC is usually an interpreted language. The C programming language was developed by Dennis Ritchie at Bell Labs in the early 1970s as an improved version of an earlier language called B, written by Ken Thompson, also of Bell Labs. C was designed largely to allow a portable computer operating system to be written called Unix. Earlier versions of Unix existed, but C allowed Unix to be rewritten as an improved and more portable operating system. Due to its primary function as a language for implementing operating systems, C is therefore as close to a low-level language as it can practically be while still remaining a high-level language. That is why you'll hear people saying that C is close to the machine or close to the metal, or similar. The C programming language has undergone several updates and standardizations since its creation, and remains a popular and influential language to this day, over 50 years since it was first created. Its ability to give relatively low-level access to the computer hardware while still being a high-level language means it is particularly popular for writing compilers and software on embedded computer systems, which lack the large computing overhead resources that are needed to implement other high-level languages. The styles and some of the rules or syntax of the C programming language have also been the basis or influence for many of the languages that came after it, which have names like C++, C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, Perl, PHP, Python, Ruby, Rust, etc. So having a good knowledge of C means it'll be relatively easy to get a handle on those other languages too. Image processing can be very computationally intensive. Until relatively recently, such computing power was only available on powerful expensive workstation research computers, which mostly used the Unix operating system. Given C's close association with Unix, a C compiler would usually be available for all such Unix workstations, and C would efficiently use all their computing resources to make efficient, fast programs. C was therefore the natural choice for a lot of early image processing research. Because of this, there are a lot of mature, tried and tested C programs for image processing, and many of these are free and open source, meaning that the source code for these programs is available to anyone to view and learn from, as opposed to being hidden for reasons of corporate trade secrets or similar. So, you can incorporate such source code into your own image processing C programs to avoid having to reinvent the wheel from scratch each time. C can efficiently handle essentially any image processing task and, due to its portability, widespread adoption, usefulness for embedded systems, and the fact that I have most experience with it, 
I continue to teach and develop image processing in the C programming language. In summary, 1. Computers only run programs that are represented in machine code stored in the computer's memory. 2. The machine code language is not portable across different computer types, and it takes a lot of specialist computer knowledge to read and write programs directly in machine code. 3. Intermediary programs called compilers and interpreters solve these problems by translating programs written in a more human-friendly language, the source code, into machine code. Those human-friendly programming languages are called high-level programming languages. 4. Interpreters translate and execute the source code program one small part at a time, but compilers convert the whole source code program into a machine code executable file that can run on its own. For this reason, a compiled program can run faster because it lacks the to and fro interpreter overheads. 5. The C programming language is a high level language that is compiled and relatively close to the metal compared to other high level languages while still being portable and easy to use. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more. If you want to help support this work into the future, a link to my Patreon site is in the video description below. I also include links to some other learning resources for C programming. Thanks for watching.